What's up guys, Eric Vasquez here from teachmetodesign.com and today is day 27 in our 30 tips and 30 days video series and I'm going to show you how you can create a cool typography portrait in Photoshop. So as I mentioned, today I'm going to show you guys how you can create a cool uh, typography portrait here. And I've got this really cool and kind of nasty image of a zombie going on here, so you can see it. And um, you may have seen this um, this effect used before, but I'm not sure if you know how to actually create it. And you know, everybody has a slightly different approach. So uh, the first thing I'm doing is creating a text box over the whole image, which you can do uh, just by clicking and dragging. And I've also just made a copy of the background layer here. Okay, so what you want to do once you have your type box is come up to type and do paste lorem ipsum. Now all lorem ipsum is is um, basically some dummy dummy text that you can use. And you'll see it's incredibly small, but it is there. <laughs> and um, you know, this is kind of a handy feature when you don't have any text or anything specific that you want to use at the moment. Um, you know, so you can kind of put it in there as a, as a placeholder. Okay, and um, what we want to do here is actually uh, change it to uh, like justified type, meaning that you know it will span across the entire uh, canvas here. Okay, and then um, we're just going to play around a little bit with the spacing and the kerning to try and get it to be, you know, a little more even and just kind of uh, you know chunky to to fill up the space, something like that, maybe with a little bit more. Uh, spacing between the lines and what I'm doing here is just adjusting the the line spacing so if you click anywhere in here and press command A to select the type you can then use alt option and your up and down arrows to actually control uh, the space in between the lines or if you use the left and right arrows it will control uh, the space in between the individual letters or uh, even the kerning between characters okay so you see now we have our uh, lorem ipsum type over here and then below that we have our zombie. So I'm going to create one more new layer, uh, command option shift N, and then fill it with our foreground color which is black by pressing alt option and delete on the keyboard. Okay. Now uh, the next thing we're going to do is take our copy, our, our duplicate of the zombie layer and move it to the top of our layers uh, stack right here. And then um, if you move your cursor between this layer and the type layer below, and hold the Alt Option key, you can actually make it a clipping mask. So now uh, you're only seeing the zombie inside of the type, right? But if you move it, you know, it's not there. So you want to make sure that it kind of covers your whole image like that. Now the cool thing is, um, you know, you can come in here and you can make certain words bigger, you know, if you want to emphasize certain things or, um, you know, just to, to mix it up and it'll show you a little bit more of the image there. You can even do uh, you know, a few lines at a time and, and see how it, it affects the image. Um, and to do that, you know, I'm just selecting it coming up to the, the top here where it says set the font size and you can just drag it left and right to, uh, to adjust that. Okay, so uh, one other thing that I want to show you here is, um, you know, I'm going to make another copy of this layer and then come down to the adjustment layer icon and click while holding down the Alt Option key. Okay, now from here we're going to make a black and white copy and make sure to check this off which says use previous layer to create clipping mask. Alright, that's just going to ensure that these two layers are connected. Alright, then we're going to uh, hold down the shift key and select that layer and then merge them together by pressing command E on the keyboard. Alright, now um, here's a shortcut that you guys might find uh, useful. If you want to move uh, layers up or down, you can hold down the command key and use the left bracket to move it down, um, or you can use the right bracket to move it up. Okay, so um, now, that, now that we've done that, I've moved it down and up, you'll see that it's actually has a, uh, you know, it has a clipping mask here kind of attached to it now. Alright, so what we can do is adjust the opacity of it, maybe around 50%, so it's not, you know, not fully saturated like that. All right, and you can also experiment with uh, you know some of the blending modes here. You know, this is a soft light kind of effect to give it a little more contrast, um, which actually looks kind of cool. All right, and then let's duplicate this layer one more time, 
uh, just to see what happens when we do this. Um, now it's it's not part of the, uh, it doesn't have a clipping mask, it's outside of that, but it's 50% uh, of our black and white. Okay, so from here, um, I'm going to hold down the Alt Option key and click on Add Layer Mask. Now what this does is by holding, on, holding down the Alt Option key, it's automatically going to uh, fill your layer completely with black. Okay, so instead of painting with black to remove the image or hide the image, we're actually going to be painting with white to bring it back in. So this way you can kind of, you know, fade the type if you want. You know, maybe you only want it on uh, a certain part of the image. And you can also, you know, modify your, your design like that, right? Um, but, you know, that's just, that's just one other thing that you can do. Um, let's see what happens if we make a copy of our type layer and move that to the top of the layers palette. And then maybe we change the blending mode of the type, you know, for an added effect. You know, you can try overlay. And, you know, here's another thing that you can try too. You can always come up to your type, rasterize it, and maybe try some kind of a, a blur or something like that, you know, like a motion blur, um, just to see, you know, if that, if that does anything cool. Um, and, you know, a lot of it is just about kind of experimenting and trying different stuff, but this is the basic uh, approach that you could use to create a type portrait. Um, and it's a, it's a pretty cool effect, you know. Um, if you want to, you know, maybe rotate the type, uh, you know, make it larger, anything like that, um, just have some fun with it, you know, and this, this works really well with, with uh, any image, really, um, and you can get rid of some of the type, too, if you, uh, you know, don't want it to be completely covered in your image here. So what I'm doing is just, uh, you know, getting rid of some of that, a couple lines here, you know, and by adding space, you're, you know, kind of knocking it out into the dark areas as well, and, um, Let's see what else we can do with this here. Yep. Doing that, 50% black and white. Okay, I'm actually going to try putting a layer mask on the type now and erasing some of it with a, with a black brush, maybe so we can see uh, more of the eye. This doesn't really give me the effect that I want. See, that's kind of cool if you kind of make it a little more black and white instead of full color. You know, we're erasing that now. But you guys kind of uh, get the idea. You know, you can play around with the layers, the, you know, the, uh, the blending modes, and also experiment with the, you know, the masks and, and full color or, you know, black and white for a whole uh, range of cool effects. So aside from those, you know, tricks and things that you can mess around with, you can also... Uh, double click on your type layer and apply um, any kind of layer style which is kind of cool. Um, say you want to add a color, you can also play with those blending modes to kind of create this cool effect and right there I also have the, uh, the satin uh, style checked off. So you can see you get like a whole you know a whole range of stuff that you can do here. You can add a glow, although it doesn't look very good, you know maybe a bevel anything like that. The color tint is kind of cool actually, um, you know, but this will also work with a with a gradient. Um, let's say you want to do like a, I'm just going to use one of these default colors here, uh, you know, like if you apply a gradient like that, and you can mess with the blending modes of that as well. So there's really, I mean, a ton of stuff that you, you can do here. I'm going to uncheck satin and just leave like a red overlay on it right there. I'm just kind of looking again to see what happens, you know, with all of these um, adjustment layers here. I think I want to um, take my original uh, full color layer here and then actually group it with the two layers above and then apply a layer mask while holding down the Alt Option key and then brush some of the color back in with a, with a soft white brush like that. You know, that's kind of a cool effect also if you want to you know slowly start to reveal 
uh, some of your image below, um, especially on these areas where it's like just kind of, you know, nasty and, and mauled and, you know, pretty zombied out. So um, it's a cool, it's a cool looking effect, guys. And I, I encourage you to, uh, you know, go to town and, and experiment with this stuff. And, you know, hopefully you guys are, uh, you know, learning and, and trying some of these tips out that I've been sharing with you guys over the last uh, 28 days or so, 27 days. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm very excited to see how you guys use this stuff in your own work. Please, you know, subscribe and sign up for our email list and uh, let us know how we can help you design better. See you next time.